Let's do a quick uh, run through or re review of inverse functions. If I have a function f, then it has an input. We often call that x. We're not, uh, we don't have to, but we often call it x, and we're going to, I'm going to call it x consistently here. And the output we often call y. So, for example, e.g., we could have like y equals x squared plus one. And we often want to have the graph of that. That's a parabola. I'll lift it up. And what we want to do is we want to ask, can I undo the function? Or can I play the mystery input game? What give it, I'm going to give you the output of this function. Can you tell me what I'm thinking of as the hidden mystery input? Well, for this function, that's just not going to work. If I say y equals 5, then it's not too hard to figure out that x could be 2, or wait a minute, it could be minus 2. You can't tell what I'm thinking there. We can't actually get the mystery input. We can't undo this function. And what's happening graphically is that setting a fixed value of y means put in a horizontal line, and that intersects the graph two places. For a fixed value of y, there's two possible inputs. Okay, so first of all, we have to just have a terminology and the idea that this is not going to be the kind of thing we're going to play the mystery input game in. We're not going to try and undo, or what's called invert, the function for these guys. And the terminology is that this function, if f of x is given by this formula, then f is not 1 to 1. 1 to 1, meaning for every one output, there's only one input. Because here there was two inputs for lots of the possible outputs. Okay, And graphically, what we observed here is that it fails the horizontal line test. So you can, it's pretty easy to see it graphically. From, a, from an equation, it's about can you solve and can you get just one answer for solving x in terms of y. It's opposite from the usual process. The usual process with a function is you plug in x and then you get y. That's evaluating the function. Here, we're trying to undo that evaluation. It's a much more interesting operation, trying to invert the function. So it's not about plugging in, it's about solving. And sometimes that's just not possible. You can't get just one unique answer. So, some of your problems are going to be about is a function one-to-one, -one? and it's the, the issue is, is there at most one input for any given output? Now, let's suppose we do have something that's one-to-one. -one. Let's say I have y equals f of x, and let's, let's not use a formula yet. Let's not focus on that, because it's really about a conceptual thing. And I want to emphasize the idea, which is really good for thinking about compositions as well, and thinking about things like the chain rule which we're also thinking about right now in class. And um, we want to think of f as a machine, that it takes some input, does something with it, and then spits out the output. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take the output. I'm just trying to say, hey, given that I see this output coming out, can I invent a machine which is going to be called f to the minus 1, f inverse, that then actually produces the, the mystery input. This is a machine that would automatically give the answer to the mystery input game. So I wouldn't have to do a lot of work every time. I just have, I just plug it into the, this machine. Okay? And this is, machine isn't going to exist unless f is one-to-one. -one. But let's assume it is one-to-one. -one. And we want to think about how to understand this machine. How would we get a formula for it if, if we have a formula for f? How would we graph it if we have a graph of f? How would we do calculus with it, for example? That's going to be an interesting issue. So let's go to a, an explicit example um, in terms of maybe the formulas and see what procedure we need to do to do this. So let's say y equals, let's have a rational function, y equals 1 over 1 plus x. And I'd like to get that, so that's f of x f is the thing that if you put some number x into it, it takes 1 plus that, it takes a reciprocal, and that creates the output. And I'd like to get the, um, the undoing function for that. Well, the idea, as on this previous page, was given the y, I want to solve for x. 
So instead of plugging in x and getting y, I want to plug in y and get x. So what that amounts to is a very standard piece of algebra, isolating a variable. Can I isolate x in terms of y? And that's going to flip the roles, where x is going to be alone on one side and the y is going to be inside a function. And I claim that's going to be half of the work, most of, well, most of the work and half the idea of creating the new function. So I can just uh, take the reciprocal of both sides and then just subtract 1 and I'm done. Sometimes it's a bit more, a bit harder than this, but we're going to focus on usually fairly simple algebra. So, so far I haven't really done anything, I haven't changed anything. I've just said if y and x are in this relationship, then x and y are in this relationship. But let's, I really haven't completely used the perspective of undoing, and I certainly haven't used the perspective of here's a new function whose input is coming from over here, as opposed to f whose out input is coming from over here, and f inverse's output is over here. And the way we're going to recognize that is we're going to maybe put a little bit more emphasis on the letters than we ought, when we sort of ought to, and than we usually traditionally do. It's usually it's really important to be able to put in whatever letters you want. But here, because we're really making a careful distinction between inputs and outputs, it's going to be very handy to switch x and y. Because here, we're basically treating y as our input. Well, that's a very untraditional name for an input, and it's going to be really confusing if we persist on thinking of y as the input for this function. We're trying to create a new function that we, we can then go off and use for other purposes, and it doesn't always have to be tied to f. It's going to, the reason we were interested in it is it undoes f, but then we're going to take it and use it for all sorts of things. And so we don't have to say, oh wait, the variable, the input variable has to be called y. Let's call the input variable x. All that is doing is a letter switch. It's just typographical. It's not a math step. We've done the algebra, and now we just say that uh, we switch x and y, and we rewrite this equation as y, 1 over x minus 1 equals y. Or in other words, f inverse of x, the formula that takes some input and produces the, the output of f inverse is 1 over whatever that thing is minus 1. Here, we were calling that input y because we were kind of that was kind of a left over from how we started the problem where where y was the output of f and x was the input of f. So here this is really we've already got f inverse in hand here. It's just that that's f inverse of y. That's if you have something called y and you want to undo the action of f, here's what you do to create x. But that's this situation where it would be very confusing if we left it that way because then we we'd say, "Well, why is that a y? I thought that's the input of my function." So we just switch the letters. And um, we get a formula for the inverse function. So two steps, solve for x in terms of y, and then simply switch x, and then you've got the formula for f inverse. So that's how it works on the algebra side. Let me start the story of how it works on the graph side, and I think we'll need um, at least part of another video for that. So um, let's go ahead and graph. Let me just sketch up the graph of that function. 1 over 1 plus x. If you want to stop here and graph it on your calculator, that would be a good idea. I'm just, I just want to continue the same example. It's not that there's anything special about that. There's an asymptote at x equals minus 1. When x equals 0, it's 1. And uh, it looks like this. It's just the 1 over x graph shifted to the left by 1 unit. Okay. So this is y equals 1 over 1 plus x. And eventually we're going to want to get the graph of the inverse function. That's f of x. And I'm going to want to get the graph of the inverse function to that. And we'll probably start with a simpler one for just like a random example. Let's look at some random graphical example. We'll come back to this one. Uh, and let's say it looks like this. I'll do a simple one. Here's what's up. Here's one that's going to be very interesting. Just just like that. Okay. Let's say that's my f of x graph. And what I want to do is I want to think purely graphically in either of these examples, how would I get the graph of the inverse function? You probably remember it somewhat, but I'll review it. 